the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight we take up the third commandment, namely, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now, when God first gave this commandment to the Israelites, he also said how no work was to be done on the Sabbath day, the seventh day, and explained the Sabbath rest as imitating his own rest on the seventh day after he had created the universe. This commandment was abused by the Jews when they returned to Jerusalem after their captivity in Babylon. They treated the day as any other day, a day of busyness, of work, of buying and selling. And then poor Nehemiah, of which we read tonight, was righteously indignant and had the gates locked to the city to keep the merchants outside the city. Then he commanded the Levites to guard the gates, all for the purpose that the Sabbath might be properly kept by the Jews who lived in the city. Now let me then, as a Levite, that is, as a preacher, guard the gates, that is, explain to you the word of God and what this commandment means and how to properly keep the Sabbath because the fact is things have changed since our Lord appeared. And first let me right off the bat say this, that in its literal outward sense, this commandment, the third commandment, no longer applies to God's people, to us Christians. It has been abrogated. It has been Fulfilled, It has been done away with. And this goes not just for the Sabbath observance, but for all commandments in the Old Testament that deal with various days in addition to the Sabbath day, the feast days of tabernacles, of booths, the Passover and so on, which the Israelites were expected to observe. Well, all these days, including the Sabbath day, were prophetic of Christ. And when he came, they expired. Good thing, because should we be observing literally the Sabbath as it is written, we've grossly broken it. We all do yard work on Saturday. We don't gather on Saturday to hear God's word preached. Again, friends, all the outward worship laws given to the Jews have been fulfilled and done away with. This includes not just the feast days, the Sabbath, but it includes the dietary restrictions, the temple, the sacrifices, the priesthood. And the Apostle Paul spoke of these things when he said, Therefore let no one pass judgment on you, you Christians, in Colossians and all Christians, in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. This verse is key for understanding this commandment and so much of the commandments given to the Israelites. That said, that said, let's get behind the third commandment and understand its importance for today. Let's understand why it was given in the first place. And it was given for this. Two reasons. Why was the third commandment given? For two reasons. First, for rest. It's really natural law that we need regular rest. Even animals need rest. Perhaps even machines need rest. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. But we need rest so that we would think about spiritual things. This is the purpose behind the commandment to rest, that we would think about spiritual things. We would think about God's word and how it applies and how we ought to live it. And so this is a good time to take stock And to not let busyness take over your life. Or you're going to fail to observe the third commandment. 
which still to this day means resting and taking time off from the busyness of life, but time off to do what? And here comes the second reason, to attend public worship, right? So the Sabbath was given for rest, but it was given so that we'd have a time to attend public worship. We have always needed, from Adam and Eve's time, a place and a time to gather together to hear and learn God's word and then praise God in song and with prayer. And we just read in Nehemiah how the Jews who had returned to Jerusalem would gather and attend to God's word. The word was read. The word was explained. This is the heart and center of Christian worship. For Christians, this day has always been on Sunday. Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead. And so it is appropriate and good and natural for Christians to meet on Sunday, but Christians could meet on any day of the week to gather for public worship and so observe the third commandment. Now, going back to the wording of the commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You could paraphrase this as mark off the Sabbath by keeping it holy. So the question is, how is this day kept holy? Many of the Jews, even until Jesus' day, felt that observing the Sabbath was completed, was satisfied by not working. And this commandment was greatly elaborated on by the Jews of Jesus' day. And they made crazy laws about how many steps you could go from your house, things that you could pick up from the ground, things that you couldn't. Jesus was even accused of breaking the Sabbath when he healed on the Sabbath. That was considered work. But they really erred in this respect. How do you keep the day holy? It was never ceasing from work. The day is kept holy by attending to God's holy word. This is how anything is made holy. God's holy word. We just sang in Psalm 138 that God has set his word above all things. It's his word that matters most in this world. It's the true holy thing above all holy things, Luther said. And in this respect, we should make every day holy by considering God's word, meditating on it, thinking about it, applying it, comforting ourselves in it. But since we have jobs to do, we have things to get done, we have places to go, we mark off one day out of the week, which makes sense to natural reason, to attend to God's holy word. True Sabbath keeping then, friends, is this, is learning, meditating, and speaking back to God his word. You can keep the Sabbath and you ought to. You can observe the Sabbath and ought to on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we set aside Sunday to gather for that second great reason this commandment was given, to gather for public worship. And make no mistakes, friend, the the. the the Sabbath keeping, as properly understood and interpreted, still, God still expects this to be strictly observed. God will punish all who despise his word. And so this commandment is broken by the crass sinner who doesn't go to church at all, but sleeps in and lets his flesh do the talking, who becomes so satisfied with life and pleasing his flesh that he sees no need to attend to God's word and public worship. But this commandment is also broken by those who attend to God's word and public worship but fail to learn it and retain it just by walking in the door. doesn't mean you've satisfied the third commandment. This goes for all who have heard a good sermon or two and think they've got it all figured out. And have earned a PhD in theology. Oh, friends, may we be humble enough to realize that we can 
not mine the scriptures for all it's worth. We could live a thousand lifetimes and have so much to learn from God's word. And so let's observe this command by coming, attending to public worship, by learning it, by retaining it, even by memorizing it, by thinking about it. And friends, this commandment is so valuable. It's in this respect, it's a sure way to put the devil to flight. Uh, whenever God's word is considered, wherever it is believed, wherever it is preached and taught and received, the devil is put to flight. And uh, this is how we can keep ourselves safe from the evil one. This is enough then for tonight on the third commandment. Amen. Please rise for our canticle. <laughs>